champions, cupcakes and cookies. <laughs> yeah, all right. Loud enough. Or... I just did. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's see. We got any announcements? I know ladies' prayer tomorrow night at Miss Judy's house. Everybody see Miss Judy? I heard a rumor. They have big-time dynamic speaker coming tomorrow night, so... I'm telling you, you don't want to miss that. <laughs> Big time dynamic speaker shaking her head, but uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see what else. We got the final tally for the golf scramble. All right, final tally for the golf scramble. <laughs> Bless people, bless people. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see. What else? The cut, the, the taco or what? I yep. forgot the date on that thing. When is that? This coming Saturday? 12 to 2, right? Oh, is it 11? There's a flyer back there. So if anybody's around town, go, go support them. Huh? Or yes. All right, so anyway, there's info on that. Yeah, he's, Alex talked to us about that. He really wanted us to partner with them as much as we can on that. They do a home, or a food ministry in our county, and they really do a great work. They feed a lot of people. But, and he has a bunch of freezers. But he needed those visitors that are like refrigerators for that type of food. And then he wants, he wants a good one. He don't want something that's going to break down, and I think it's about $6,000. And one of their uh, primary uh, fundraisers is this fajita dinner. It's not taco, it's fajitas. And so uh, he asked Jason and me to help promote that, to support them. And so we appreciate our Hispanic brethren and sisters. So next Saturday? I think 11 to 2 or something like that. There's a paper back there. I should have got it. Go get all the. So go eat fajitas. Yeah. I thought I 
Saturday. It's Saturday. But it's at the church. It's at their church. Oh, at the church. Yes. I thought you said at the church. Well, after church. Yeah. Old Highway 51 North. Old Highway 51 North. It's 11 to 2. 11 to 2. Saturday the 15th, right? Jesus. Jesus SLC North. Donation. Yeah. All right. Everybody got it? Yeah. 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 Facebook Live, so everybody say, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Yeah, we love you. We love you. Well, all right, so here we go. Who wants to know God more? I do. All right, here we go. Good morning. Good morning. Everybody just relax in the presence of God today. This uh, Facebook thing, I had somebody ask me this week, they just couldn't figure out how we made that connection with uh, Kenya. How did that happen? I just saw our programming on Sunday morning and made the contact with Matt. Is that accurate? That's it. Yep. And I said, are you serious? I said, yeah, that's exactly how that happened. So I think sometimes we think that we're not making that big, I mean, we're, we're limited in the impact. And the fact is, technology can do a lot of bad in our world, but look at that. I mean, look how we're changing, maybe having an impact on dramatically on people's lives several thousand miles away uh, and I think the more we focus on that there's no limits to what God can do you know whatever you're doing that can have a big impact so that's kind of a good thing it's all about the kingdom we'll sing this old song uh, there's a lighthouse on a hill that overlooks like sea when I'm lost it's in bound the light I might see and the light that shines in darkness now will safely lead me if it was Tell me 
In these desperate times, I love the whole of I love the joy I have. Teach us to have no fear. So we lay our head down and watch them free. When we see our brother, oh, I know that we will be free. I know that we will be see the, the bondage uh, and the look in their face and a, a worry, a worry about, oh, I'm not going to make it to heaven, I want to make it to heaven. And there's a, a, a freedom associated with the gospel of grace that you can relax. And all this, like Jason talking about how much stress causes physical struggles in our human bodies. If you're free knowing that you're comfortable in your salvation, and uh, I had this old friend, uh, Charles Mahaney, he was a preacher, UPC preacher. He was a Pentecost preacher, but he had grace and revelation. And he's, he's pastor asked him one time, he said, you know you're going to heaven? He said, yes, just that quick, yes. He said, well, how do you know that? Because, I mean, they preach all the time that you've got to have sinless perfection. You've got to do everything right. There's no sin going to enter the kingdom and all that. And uh, he said, because of the cross, <laughs> just that simple. The cross was good enough, it was enough. And that's what we have in that song is we're free from that. That doesn't mean it cheapens the gospel or cheapens what happened on the cross. It makes it more valuable to me. Once I started seeing that and walking in that, and, and we were just talking about before church about one of Matt's friends that, that don't know whether they believe or not in God. It's because the only God they've been exposed to is one of 
of law and of bondage and of uh, judgment. And it's like, that doesn't work. And that's kind of a, a fake, fraudulent deal that you people are trying to do. You think they can be good enough to earn the favor of God. So I'm not just going to buy into that. That's really a sign of intelligence that people don't buy into that program. That's why it's so critical what we have that we get it exposed to the world. And not that we got everything. We're still just scratching the surface. We talk about the keys to the kingdom that we've had the last, what, 13 or 14 years. It's been a process of keys. We didn't get it all at once. We sure don't have it all now. We're just barely scratching the surface. But I'm so thankful for that. Most thankful for the freedom that we have. And even in our music department here, there's a freedom that's unlike any that I've ever been around because um, we, it's, it's not about the program or not about just uh, you know satisfying somebody's requirement of having a good program at that church down there. We're kind of allowed to be individuals, am I right? And then, like what Matt did last week and all that, how, how cool is that? There's no one church that I know of that does that. But it's also, I'll say this one more thing, because I'm not on the payroll. All this <laughs> uh, when, when we fought the Iraq War, they picked out Norman Schwarzkopf as the general of the Central Command Forces. You know why? Because he knew more about Saddam Hussein and the Republican Guard than anybody in the world. He had studied that. He, that was his theater of operations. He knew them. He knew the enemy. That's why Bush wanted him as the leader. That's what we do. And what I've learned in, in my time in playing music in church is you learn how to spot the enemy. Because he can tear up uh, anything through the music. If he wants to, because the devil was the prince of power of music in heaven before he got kicked out. He knows how to get in our egos and all that. But I was thinking while well, Mac was playing the drums on that last song, how beautiful that was and what a contribution. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, cool. Awesome. But I'm just thinking. Yeah.
Just imagining uh, all them kids, so, uh, thirty some of them youngins. I don't, I don't know. I've never been around well digging or nothing, but you kind of have an idea like you see in the movies or something. And I was thinking about while we're just who on here, uh, maybe we should. I think uh, this maybe I don't know. This may be way wrong, but it seems like Africa be big on drums. I don't know. But <laughs> I think we ought to play a big drum. <laughs> of hooting, hollering, foot stomping, drumming, extravagance of some kind. <laughs> and while we're doing that, here's what I was picturing while they were playing that last one is all gathered around that well digging thing and then you know you hit water and how that water just like <clears throat> like exploding water. You know, you guys with me, you seeing that? And all them 30-some youngins just out there in that water dancing, their eyes shining, and probably never even seen mud before, and just out there having a huge time. Come on, he said what, you told me what, increase their, we send them something ever, however often, and you got increased five dollars or something, and because of five dollars, they could each have a glass of water before they went to bed. Wow. You think about that. And I'm thinking about standing out there with that water gushing up out of the ground and their lives will forever change and get yes. to drink water and play in the mud and just I just want to see their eyes shining and laughing and carrying on and hooting and, and they don't even know these songs but probably but look what the Lord has done. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what song that is, but let's play a drum and beat and bang. Who rock? You want to and yeah. see that and celebrate? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got that. You might need it.
about putting Cindy on the spot. <laughs> Oh, 
Or 
you know, make a wish, blow out your candles, and it's usually something preposterous that ain't really, here we're going to happen, but we just like, well, I wish it would happen. <coughs> Instead of what hope actually is, I think is a way more powerful concept than, than just wish. It's like, it, it's a it's an internal thing. It's not external. It's an internal work. It's, it's a work of the heart. And so, like, we were in... Let's see, how long has it been now? Last week we did music stuff, and so it was two weeks ago, I guess, we talked about, uh, you know, the verse at the end of the love chapter. It says this, these three remain, right? Faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. So I just threw out a whole bunch of chunks, and so now we're, we'll try to clean some of that up and talk about faith, hope, and love, uh, all the aspects of how that works, and uh, what it actually is, it's really some good stuff. It's, man, I mean, oh gosh, let me read you some stuff here. Uh, there, if you really just go to looking at what hope is, it's, it's a, I just can't believe we don't talk about it more or, or understand it more. It's really underrated. It's under talked about. It's, a, it's an incredible thing. Listen to this. This is a, this is Hebrews. Uh, let me read it the NLT first. This is Hebrews 6. And this is kind of talking about Abraham. You know, Abraham promises that God gave Abraham right to bless him and all that. And so it says this. Uh, Hebrews 6, 18 to 19. This is the New Living Translation. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because, it's, because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our soul. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. I'll better say that again. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary oh my goodness listen to this 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 is uh the passion translation same same passage so it is impossible for god to lie for we know that his promise and his vow will never change and now we have run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness this is where we find his strength and comfort for he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time an unshakable hope we have this certain hope, like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God himself. Our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat, which sits in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold. Uh, it is impossible for God to lie, for we know that his promise and his vow will never change. And now we have run, and now we have run into his heart to hide ourselves in his faithfulness, this is where we find his strength and comfort. For he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time an unshakable hope. Man, you got that? Here's what an unshakable hope is. Hiding ourselves in his faithfulness. This is where we find his strength and comfort. For he empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time. He empowers us to take a hold. Seize, like you got seize. For he empowers us to take a hold. What has already been established ahead of time. That's an unshakable hope. So here's one definition of hope. His power working in us to get a hold of what has already been established ahead of time. All right, can you take one more? <laughs> this is the message. I like the message. I like them all. Uh, the, the message breaks things down different, so it's a little more of it. So uh, we're going to read a little more, but here it is, Hebrews 6. When God made his promise to Abraham, he backed it all the way, putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I promise 
that I bless you with everything I have. Now, now, wait a minute. That ain't just for, Ab for Abraham, right? The, the blessing of Abraham is now ours. You, you can get a little more excited about this because it ain't just Abraham, all right? When God, oh, come on here. When God made his promise to Abraham, he backed it all the way, putting his own reputation on the line. He said, I promise that I'll bless you with everything that I have. Bless and bless and bless. I like the message there. <laughs> I promise that I'll bless you with everything I have. Bless and bless and bless. Abraham stuck it out and got everything that God had promised him. When people make promises, they guarantee them by appeal to some authority above them so that if there is any question that they'll make good on the promise, the authority will back them up. When God wanted to guarantee his promises, he gave his word. A rock solid guarantee. God can't break his word. And because his word cannot change, the promise is likewise unchangeable. We who have run for our very lives to God have every reason to grab the promised hope with both hands and never let go. It's an unbreakable spiritual lifeline reaching past all appearances right to the very presence of God where Jesus is running on ahead of us has taken up his permanent post as high priest for us in the order of our destiny. Man, just by that alone, can we at least come to the agreement that hope is probably more than we've thought before? I mean, I think it's bigger than we can comprehend even yet, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? I mean, just by this, what... Uh, it's, it's the very power of God inside of us to take hold of what has already been established. Wow. Wow. Well, the blessing, the promise is already, right? All of the promises of God because we're in a new covenant, right? I didn't look this up. Somebody probably could look it up real quick. Uh, all of the promises of God are yes and amen. Now, the old covenant, it was if. Maybe so. If you. Right? New covenant, there's no if you. It was if Jesus. And Jesus did. So now we're in a new covenant and all the promises are yes and amen. Right? So if all the promises are there and God swore, I mean, he made a vow to himself and swore to himself as if God ever lied and he felt the need to, I, I swear I'll make this promise good. Bless you and bless and bless and bless. And everything that you'll ever stand in need of has already been established. Where? It's not outside. It's inside. Everything that we've ever needed. Because now here, the first translation, New Living Translation said that grabbing hold of this hope allows us to go in behind the curtain. I thought this was interesting here. You know, the Old, the Old Testament is like all types and shadows and it's pictures of what's to come in the new, right? Everything in there is, it says, it's in Hebrews as well. Everything in the Old Testament is a type and a shadow or a picture of what we have in the new, right? Well, you, you remember the you remember the temple that they built? Man, the big temples and all the detail and all that. The temple's like where, where God's presence was, right? So if the Old Testament is, is a picture or a type or shadow uh, of the things in the new, then, then what, what is a pit, temple a picture of? <laughs> Uh-oh. Not the church house. Where does the presence of God live now? They say, you know, in the temple, you had like a, once a year, they had this huge curtain. It was like super thick. We think of a curtain, but it's way, it was like super thick. And only one time a year, the high priest or whatever would have to go in and, and he could go in there once a year, make sacrifice for the people. And it was so, ooh, right? And so they had to tie a bell onto his foot. Because if you go in there and he had sin or whatever else, and then he'd just die and fall over dead, right? And so they can't go in, but they're listening. As long as we can hear the little bell ringing, he's doing all right. Uh-oh. Okay. 
Uh oh, Nebuchadnezzar didn't make it with it. He said the bell ain't ringing. They, had, they pulled, tied a rope to his leg. He's walking around in there with a bell and a rope, and, and they had to pull him out because he's dead. <laughs> I'm just saying that this temple thing is a picture of, of, of you and me now. Like we can learn something about the way this thing works. So this curtain now kept them out from the presence of God. Now, because of all that Jesus did, the new covenant deal, now the curtain, you know, whenever Jesus died on the cross, the curtain, the, in the actual temple that they had at that time, the curtain was ripped from top to bottom. As if God was making an announcement, no more curtain, everybody's allowed to welcome you. So now in the new covenant, the representation of that is me and you, and it's in behind the curtain, it's inside of our own hearts. Come on, you with me? So now he's saying this, this hope thing, this, this hope deal, it's going to happen inside of you, and this hope deal is where you can lay a hold of all of the promises of God. My, my definition now of hope that I like the best, my, my, own, my own way of understanding, I'm not saying this is grammatically correct or whatever, you guys know me, <laughs> but I like to say hope is, is speculating internally. You know what I'm saying? Like the Bible would say it like this, meditation. You know that's not biblical, that's a God word, it's not, you know Buddha didn't come up with that? You know, we think of meditation as uh, um, um, all this. It's, you know what? They didn't come up with that. It's a God deal. Meditate. He told Joshua, you meditate on my words. You'll be successful. All right, all right. So what does, that, what does that even mean? It's like to go into this inside place and and meditate or or think or speculate about what does the blessing of God look like. You with me? It's like we did it a while ago. I don't know if you guys did, if you participated, but but what happened is while they were singing, we we actually went inside. See, we weren't in Kenya, were we? We weren't actually dancing around in the mud watching them kids' face, but we went inside and we saw that and pictured that and experienced that. Right? Do you know your heart doesn't know the difference between your uh, what you're feeling emotionally? Through imagination versus real life. Am I telling right, Chris? She's educated. <laughs> Your heart does cannot tell the difference between real life experiences or what you're picturing and imagining. So you can you can sit there and go inside and, and think about or imagine or play this play out inside of you of being around watching them youngins dance and laugh and joy all over their faces, their eyes shining, water running down their faces, and never even seen such water. Now imagine the emotion that would be involved if you were actually there when your heart is feeling that as if that's for real to it. Now watch this. That's where hope is. That's what hope is. Hope is a heart issue. Hope is we can go in there and inside behind the curtain, that's where intimacy with God is. And when intimacy with God happens, God provides a seed, which is the faith end of the thing. You provide hope, which is actually your heart or your womb. The seed enters the womb, hope. And the blessing of God is then produced and become, right? We said, what, two weeks ago? Uh, Christ in you is the hope of glory. That's the spirit in you. The spirit, you know, I don't have time to go on into it. Somebody would swarm probably if I did. But uh, the spirit, this, anytime the spirit is mentioned in the Bible, it's always feminine. It's always feminine. You know, that words and the language and all that, they have genders and all this stuff. Anytime the spirit is mentioned, it is always in the, in the Bible, biblically, it's what, what does that actually mean? The spirit that's been put in you is, is, is a womb. It's the womb. It's where things are created. Your spirit is the spirit of Christ, same spirit that rose Jesus up out of the grave, dwells inside of you. You with me? That's, that's your womb. God is one with faith and 
the seed, and he plants seed, and when 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 it's seed hits your womb, something's produced. That's hope. That's the blessing of God. Now what what happened? All that we just help reinforce that that well. I mean that well's already a done deal. Why? I've already seen it. I've already been there. I already saw them dancing in the mud. Now, now watch, in my heart, where things are created, my heart doesn't know the difference in between what I've imagined with God or what I'm actually sitting here in confidence with. Man, you see, I, I know this probably doesn't make a lick of sense to anybody, but do you see what, what that gives us access to be able to produce and change? The blessing of God. What does the blessing of God look like? Now I can take the blessing of God and go inside and hope. Hope's not I wish. Hope is the power within me to co-create with God and to bring about change in any situation that we want to enter into. Come on, I'll prove to you that you know how to meditate. You ever, you ever like just speculated on, oh my gosh, how bad this could be or what you can't sleep at night and you, you like have this terrible thing going on and it's like your mind is running away with you and you just up all night you can't sleep you can't eat right worrying and all that right you got the buyer been there hopefully not but probably if you've been alive for more than 10 years probably <laughs> right just worries you can't stop thinking about it that's meditating You're just meditating on Wrong thing. I actually think hope. Oh boy, I'm 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 I'm, I'm going to open up too many things here. <laughs> I actually think hope is a true form of what prayer actually is. Hope is praying, begging God, please God, please God, please God, like He's out there somewhere. Is is really? I mean, that's what we've all thought what praying is. And I don't know what it's going to, you know, that, I mean, really, how much has that worked? Sometimes maybe by accident. But we've said, please God, please God, please God, like that was praying. But I, I truly believe, personally, myself, actually hope going on inside of me is actually what the true form of what prayer is. And if that being the case, listen to this statement that I heard one time. If that's the case, which I believe it is, then worry is also a form of prayer. Worry is actually praying. Ooh. <laughs> Listen, it's good news. It's good news. Because, you know, we actually do have, now it makes more sense when I think of, think, well, let me just read you a few. Let me just read you a few. Because I, I'll say like this. Now it makes more sense when, uh, when Jesus says things like this. Uh, oh, what was the one, Richard, that one verse we like so good? I think it was, was it Philippians 2. What is it, Jacob? You, you got that one desire. He gives us the desire. What was it? What, read that one for us. Philippians. For God is working in you. Where? In you. He's doing what? He's working. Where? In you. All right. Giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. He's giving you the desire and the power. Now, here's what desire is. Ready? Hope. Come on, you're not hoping for something you don't want. You're hoping for what you do want. Right? Desires tied to hope. What is it you want? What is it we what's our desire? He's giving us the desire. So we, you know, this this fake, mean, judgmental, religious Christianity that we've all been experienced to is like, well, you can't be wanting for stuff. You can't be, deny yourself and all this stuff. I got a new heart. 
desires in me have been given to me by God. I want the same things that he wants. Now he's saying, if I can get you to want them, it'll activate your hope. And then me and hope providing the power, and we're going to produce whatever it is that you're hoping for. Whatever your desire is. You see how we got a, a part in this thing? What do you desire? Now we understand why Jesus would come along. He ran up on the, I think it was, a, uh, well, one instance it was the blind. It was a couple of blind guys, maybe. I forget exactly the story. But he said, here they're crying out. You remember on the side of the road, they're crying out. Son of David, have mercy on us. Son of David, crying out. Everybody said, shh, quit bothering him. And then Jesus goes to him and he says, what is it you want from me? I don't think, well, duh. They're blind. <laughs> kind of obvious, Jesus. Mm -hmm. What is he doing? He's saying, I need to know what your desire is because my power is going to be tied to your desire and when hope hits your insides, it's going to produce what it is you're used to. <sighs> another, another time, might have been leopards. Same, same thing, same instance. He says, what is it that you want me to do for you? Why is, he, why is he asking that? And then he says this, you know, over and different. Well, let me, let me read it to you. I got some mark here. Oh, I got so many. I could be here for five hours probably. <laughs> well, I thought I marked them. Anyway, you remember the ones where Jesus said, uh, anything you ask in my name, the Father will give you so that your joy may be full. Remember that? Anything. Now, we've really messed up ask. And you, we've talked about ask before. It doesn't mean like, please God, please God, please God, right? It's kind of more about, it's like what you require. And so I wanted to dig into that even a little deeper of what ask actually means. And the word that they wrote there for ask, if you dig all the way through that thing and get to the bottom of it, at the end of their study, like you can go do a word study, Strong's and all that stuff now. We got the internet. You can you can find out who was the first one to ever say a word, right? Seems like anymore. But at the very end of that thing, it says this. The, I don't know how do you pronounce this word? The origin or, or the actual meaning of this word is unknown. Come on, it's like they had a word that we don't even know what the word to be translated into this, so let's just throw ask in there. You see what I'm saying? So ask doesn't mean ask. If it, if it meant that, they would just say, well, it's ask, and we know that's what it means. But really, at the end of the thing, at the bottom, it says, we don't know where this word was even derived from because it's a word that we don't have. Jesus is saying, whatever you... I'm not going to do injustice to the scriptures by saying this, but I think it would be a better translation to say, whatever you hope in my name, which is a covenant relationship, whatever you hope the Father is going to give to you so that your joy may be full. What am I saying? We have the, we have the power. To say whatever the blessing of God is, that's what I desire. And I don't mean this religious thing of, well, whatever God's will is for me. That's so cheap. That'd be like Emma. You guys, you guys think I love Emma? Yeah. Yeah, Emma's something else. She's good. She's easy to love, really. But, but it'd be like Emma saying, "Oh, great Father of mine." <laughs> Whatever you have for my life to do, that is what I will do. I doesn't matter what I want or any of that. I will just obey. And, and whatever your plans are for my life, I, that's okay with me. How dumb is that? <laughs> How stupid does that sound? Huh? What, what kind of father is that? That's a, that father's a jerk. That father doesn't care anything about the the purposes and the callings and the gifts and the dreams and the talents that Emma would have. A good father would say this, Emma, whatever you desire to do, I've put, I've put myself in you. And so whatever your dream is, I'm going to empower you to fulfill that thing. You just decide and we'll go conquer that. Come on, which sounds like, which sounds like good news? Which sounds like a good father? You know what the Father's saying? I've given you everything. I've established it before time. 
everything that you're ever going to need. You're not lacking power. You're, you're not lacking anything on my end. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to hope, or let's make it simpler. I need you just to decide what it is you want. And we're going to go get that. We're going to go conquer that. What do you want? Now, once you decide what you want, you go inside and you think on that. You, you spend time there. You see intimacy with God. It's like, how does that look like? What does that look like? What does that look like for Emma? Emma wants to be a astronaut. <laughs> Not really, but I don't know, maybe. No. No, <laughs> no on astronauts. <laughs> oh, but thus saith your father. The father says you're going to be an astronaut. You don't have any. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> see, you see how dumb that is? Now, now, what is it? What does Emma do? Emma wants to be an astronaut. We're just for saying, you know, just for an example. Emma wants to be an astronaut. She's got a desire to be an astronaut. She, she just wants to be an astronaut. So, what ha what happens now? How does Emma do? She spends time with her father. She slows herself down and she activates hope. How do we activate hope? That's a good question, right? How do we activate hope? We slow down. We go into our inside, right? Jesus said, pray in your closet. He didn't mean where you hang your clothes in the house. In the house, the inner part of your house. Where's that? Go in your heart, inside of you. Spend time. You ever just sit by yourself and be quiet? Or, you know, or it happens sometimes in the shower. You know why in the shower? Because you go into like automatic pilot. Everybody with me? Yeah. Yeah. Did not you guys yes. see what I'm saying? Because you don't have to think about well the shampoo and all these steps. I like no, you don't think about any of that. You got to go on automatic pilot in the shower, and what happens is you you shut this thing down long enough for you to start. You ever get great ideas in the shower, yeah. yes. or or driving down the road with the music playing? That's a good one too. I like that one. You ever just drove like 100 miles and then all of a sudden you're like, how in the world did I get here? What was I thinking about? Never once did I think about, okay, gas on this side, friendship, blinker. Uh, no, I didn't think, I didn't remember passing all these exits. I don't remember any of that. Where was I? I was outside of here. Get good ideas. You know, all of a sudden you're just thinking about this or thinking about that, right? You can, you can do that on purpose. We did it a while ago. On purpose, we put ourselves watching them youngins. Follow me? You can do that on purpose. Now, what do you want? Think about that. So Emma would say, okay, man, take a deep breath, slow down, on purpose. Man, I'm just, oh, man, thank you, Father, that you've empowered me. You've given me this new covenant. You've laid your promises out for me. You're teaching me all that I have access to. And so all of that, you put this desire in me to be an astronaut. I'm going to imagine myself being an astronaut. I'm going to picture myself with that bubble thing on. And, you know? I don't know what to call it. That's maybe a bad example because I don't know nothing about that. But you see what I'm saying? Picture myself in these... That room, Houston, we have a problem. All that, you know, you play that stuff out. That's far-fetched, I guess, but what What else? What about if I, the promises of God are for us to be healed and whole? What does that look like? What does it look like to be healed and whole? What does it look like to be blessed? I'm saying slow down long enough to actually entertain the idea and play it, play it for yourself. Use your imagination. Use hope. Use hope. You say, what if, man, what? Thank you. Again, thank you, Father, for that gift. That thank you for your promises. Everything you put in me. I'm going to let hope work for me. Your promises are yes and amen. It's your will for me to be blessed. Your will for me to be healed. Uh, what does it look like for me to be healed? If I had a bone leg, I would imagine myself running around with no pain. What does it look like for me to be healed? What does it look like? I would imagine myself not having to give myself these shots anymore. I'm going to spend time playing those things out in, in my heart. You with me? What if we could slow down long enough? Well, everybody just do this. Just 
that much right there feels good, doesn't it? Now I can imagine myself being pain free. Play it out. What, what would it look like if, if this? What would it look like? I mean, it could be anything. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter what it is, how big or how small. It works. It just works. Faith is going to carry home whatever it is you're hoping for. I, I can't get into it. I, I got too much. I'll get into faith next time, maybe. Because faith is carrying home to you. Faith is a servant that's been given to us, and it's carrying home everything that you're hoping for. I'll put it in, I'll put it in layman terms. Faith is bringing home everything that you're constantly thinking about. I mean, faith is a seed. Okay, so faith is a, it's also, I mean, Jesus referred to faith as a servant, saying it obeys you, right? So faith doesn't care. Faith does not care. Faith is bringing home and producing out of whatever seed that we're entertaining. So if, if we have a negative, worrisome, Fear, all that, and that's, con that's our constant yeah. place. Faith is bringing home, whatever it is that we're, you know what I'm saying? Fear will always, uh, it's like Job said, the thing I fear the most has come upon me. I mean, I don't know anybody that doesn't like this message of, of victory, they always want to bring up Job, but Job told on himself. He said, man, I've lost all this stuff. Well, even the story itself said that Satan took it all from him, not God. But it, but at the end, how come Satan couldn't even take it all from him? He told on himself. He said this, the thing that I fear the most has come upon me. What opened the door for all of this stuff to be? Fear. Fear. See how important it is what you hear, you know? So, uh, to me, I don't want to say it just because I'm not afraid of what people are going to misconstrue it and say whatever else, but <laughs> I mean, positive. God's positive. God's not negative. And if you think on positive things, you're going to I mean, positive things are just going to, uh, it, can it be that simple? Can we just say it that simple? If we think on positive things, that's hope. And faith is carrying out everything that it is we're hoping. Come on. Faith is the substance of things. The evidence of things not seen. Jesus said, if you had faith just the size of a mustard seed, what's he saying? It don't take very much. We've, we've uh, me included, we've all tried to have more faith and bigger faith, and I want strong faith, and I, and I do. I'm not saying all that, but but you can become legalist about that and and be focused on all that, and then for long you're self-centered and self-focused, and it's all my faith and me, me, me. Ah. Jesus said, it's the littlest thing that you could even measure. If you have that much, you would say to a mulberry tree, be uprooted, cast into the sea, and it would obey you. Is that what he said? What's the subject of the story? Faith. faith. All right, so. What's it will obey you? What's it? Faith. Faith obeys you. Then in the same passage, he goes on to say, which of you having a servant when he comes in from the field? Do you set him down and you start serving him? No. You sat down and he continues to keep on serving you. Again, what's the subject? <laughs> Who's the servant? Faith is your servant that's been sent to you, and he's bringing home whatever it is that you're hoping for. You see how it's tied to your desire? What are you hoping for? What's your desire? What is it you want? Think on these things. Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is praiseworthy, whatsoever is positive. You with me? What am I hoping for? I, I'm hoping for, this is why I love the new covenant and all the promises are yes or amen. I'm hoping for, for health. 
I'm hoping for strength. I'm, I mean, I'm not wishing it. I'm playing that out in my mind. What's it look like for me to be strong? What's it look like for me to be healthy and whole? What's it look like for me to be healed? What's it look like for me to, to live prosperous and successful? And my goodness, I'm a son of God. What's your life look like? Spending time in that place thinking about these things. And that becomes my hope. And faith is just going to carry on whatever it is I'm hoping for. If nobody's ever told me any of this stuff, and I just, I tie my hope to whatever it is that I've seen through circumstances and the rest of humanity and people that don't think like me, it's like, well, you know, this is what the majority of, of man thinks, right? Well, when you get old, this happens, and you know, it's just part of getting old. Guess what? That's what you're hoping. One of the definitions of hope would be a positive expectation of good. Now that's hope to the positive side, but but the the way the thing works is the expectation. Exactly. Are you expecting to get arthritis when you get old? Because that's what society and, and history has been common, right? It's been common. Have we seen that played out? So we can either join ourselves to that and say that's what we expect to happen, or we can say, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, I got promises of God. I, I'm, I'm not that. I don't have to live by that. By the See, now we say this. It all fits, guys. Romans 12. How's it go? Renewing your mind. Somebody start me out on that. Romans 12 to this. Don't be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is the good, perfect, acceptable will of God. It also puts a whole new spin on the uh, whole Bethesda. Yeah. Because it says And as you say this, it, it just goes in my mind, Jesus is just talking about hoping. You know, getting him to see a desire of going, well, yeah, I want to get well. But, you know, like, yeah. you know, okay, that's enough. And, and working where he's at instead of Jesus being snarky at it. Yep, exactly. Saying, do you want to get well? And is it your desire? Because my power is hooked to your desire. What do we expect? Expect this to happen when we get old. Expect this to happen and expect that to happen. Expect, come on, all our expectations are tied to, to society and the world way more than, than, than we know. And so to transform our minds to quit thinking that way and understand what we have access to is a whole, whole different deal. Huh? I mean, what, I'm, gonna, I'm expecting to be just this, this healthy and strong and whole when I'm 80. Yeah. When I'm 100. Maybe then they'll start believing me. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, you guys with me? Yeah. So I'm not. I'm just saying. Let's 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 play with this a little bit. Let's experiment with this a little bit. God's not offended by that. Let's think about. It. Let's just. If you, I don't like the word necessarily because it sounds like work, but. Come on, let's just take a little time throughout our days and practice this a little bit, or just be, just be conscious of it happening. Maybe that's enough. And say, God, you want? I want you to show me this. It's making sense to me, I, but I, but it's a completely spin on the way we anybody's ever taught us to think or do. So so show me this, and let me be aware of it, and and continue to take me to those places where I can just think about it. I can just I can just come on. Science is proving this. The science world, and I'm going to get in trouble now. The science world has a better grasp on the things of God than the church. 
Science is actually proving the Bible to be true. Science is actually proving the things of God to be true. While the church is over here arguing about doctrine. And I don't want to be in that bunch. I want, I want to be hungry for God and know the things of God and the ways of God and say, hey, you, you have an answer. You are the answer. And, and you refuse to be the answer all by yourself. So, so teach us. Teach us what hope is and how to use it. Teach us how we can a, a change and affect and, and, and have an impact on our surroundings and life and our community. You with me? Yes. Have I got the right bunch? Yes. I could just talk about this forever, so let's quit if you want to. No fajitas today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somewhere, maybe. Yes, but. Is everybody good? Yes. Did I answer your question? Or, yes. Now look, don't don't let don't let the presence of fear and us not knowing create condemnation in us either and say, well, I brought all this on myself. Don't don't go there. Don't do that. It's nobody's fault. We haven't known. We've just not known. Nobody's taught us and all that. We've been duped. You know. So don't take on guilt and shame and don't don't hear me saying, well, everything that you're living in is all your fault because that's what's in your heart. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying that. Don't don't even entertain those ideas. It is it's all of our faults. We haven't known. We've just been religious. But thank God He's intervening in that deal and He's taken us places that I believe nobody's ever been before. I'm tired of this religious mess. All right. That's good. Yeah. I know I probably created a hundred questions for from one answer, but all right, we're gonna keep sorting this out. All right, I'll talk about faith more next time. Everybody's good. Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't know. We, we don't even have to sing something, but all right. All good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's seeing them faces. He's seeing them fancy faces dancing in that water, gushing up out of there in the mud. Keep seeing yourself healed. Keep seeing yourself blessed and going your way.